ain't no giving me two. Oh my god! Oh my god! Look at all these fans! Oh! Oh, hi, Biggie! Hi, Biggie! You mad at me? Biggie, give me one more chance. What you looking at, Faith? What you looking at? Ooh, look at Chris Webber. Ooh, ooh, you big old man. All right, now it's time to start this show, all right? Let's get it <laughs> on right. Yeah, Yo, what's up, everybody? Welcome to the Sauce Award. Put your hands together, y'all. Right on. Took Pac's gun. When the cops showed up, he put it in the piano, in the studio, and closed the piano. When the cops came, Big walked back into the studio, put Pac's gun in his waist, and walked right out of the studio. Why would you do that for somebody you allegedly and supposedly set up? <laughs> Big actually went back into the studio and got your gun from in the piano that they hid it and put it in his waistband and walked out with all of those cops out there with a gun in his waist, your gun in his waist. You knew that that did not come from B.I. So you asked the stretch to choose a sign. And he's like, you my man, and he's my man. You know where this came from. You know who you was messing with that we kept telling you not to mess with. So you know where it came from, bro. So why are you, why are you wilding? But once Pac got into wilding, there was no holding him back. So we talking, and Big was like, yo, man. I'm the one that went to the studio and got they hammer the next day. Got they hammer the next day. Out, out, the, out the piano? Mm -mm, mm -mm. That's all he said. Right. And I said, yeah. I said, I'm going to tell you where it was at. He said, how the fuck you know? I said, because I put it there. Right. I said, it was in the piano. He said, oh, shit. I said, yeah, it was the little guy had it on him. He took Pac's gun. When the cops showed up, he put it in the piano, in the studio, and closed the piano. When the cops came, Big walked back into the studio, put Pac's gun in his waist, and walked right out of the studio. Why would you do that for somebody you allegedly and supposedly it said? It was a little weird for me um, because I was sitting next to Biggie in the Peterson Automotive Museum that night when the lights came on. Um, it was a great party, I remember. We was all shouting, the way, hey, well, show me the money, and it was, it was, it was crazy, man. And... Um, the last thing Biggie said to me, we were talking. It was funny because Biggie gave me uh, a bottle of Dom Perignon, and he was like, drink half of that. And I was like, I can't drink no half a bottle of Dom Perignon. He was like, well, give it to the women or something. So I was pouring it out to women. They was drinking it. And I said, okay, it's at the halfway point. He took it and poured Grandma Ye and then filled it back up and handed it back to me. So we're sitting there, and we're talking, and um, Puff was out dancing somewhere, and the lights came on. The fire marshal said everybody had to clear out. And the last thing he said to me was, hey, Edwin, because he always called me Edwin. I always called him Christopher. He said, Edwin, you going to Niles' party? I said, yeah. And he was like, do you want to ride? And I was like, no, I had, a, I had a car in the back pocket. I, like, I got a car. I'll meet you up there. And that's the last things that we said to each other before they died. After Tupac and them stomped the kid, uh, the kid out in uh, MGM Grand, I was standing in the lobby talking to the pimps because they used to all meet at the Betty Boop Bar every time there was a fight. So I'm standing there talking to Bishop Don Magic Juan and Pretty Tony and, and Good Game and all these pimps that I know. And here come Pac and him. And Pac stops and yo, Ed, what's up? What's good? I'm like, what's good with you, man? He's like, listen, we all going over to Suge's club because Suge had a club out there. But I was doing a, a gig with uh, Chris Latimer that used to do a lot of parties after the after fight. And he was like, yo, you coming over to the club? And I was like, yeah, I think I might, have, I might come over there. But in my mind, I'm knowing this East Coast, West Coast crap is going on. I'm not going over there to be around all y'all and y'all decide, hey, we don't like the East Coast. Let's beat that up. So I was definitely not going over there. So I was like, yeah, I might come through and we change, you know, pleasantries because I was my man for a long time because a lot of people don't know Pac's right hand in New York was a dude by the name of Stretch who was part of the Live Squad. I was the executive producer of the Live Squad's entire music and, and, and their album and their long-form video and got them signed to Tommy Boy. So Pac used to be at my mama house eating mashed potatoes and baked macaroni and cheese and everything. So we were kind of, he was very tight with Stretch, so in, in turn he was tight with me. Yeah, yeah. Stretch was a, did a lot of production, a lot of stuff with Pac back in the days. And people don't know that all three of them were friends. And it was kind of weird um, that people don't know how they died, all three of them a year apart. All three of them died just like back to back to back because Stretch got killed a year to the day Pac got the, the shooting happened in the Quad Studios. And then, and then Pac and then Big. And it was just, it, it was. Think yeah. That is so far from the truth. Stretch, Stretch's murder had absolutely nothing to do with Tupac. Tupac getting shot. Stretch's murder was street beef in Queens. That's what that was. 
it was beef that his brother had that carried over to him. Because Stretching was real live on the street, young thugs, gangsters, drug dealers, like for real, for real. And I helped him clean all of that up, you know, when he came to me with the music. So a lot of people don't know that, you know, that those three guys were really good friends. And at one point, Pac and Big were really, really tight friends. Like sharing stories, sharing music, rapping together, you know, all of that stuff. They were really, really tight. Again, you just spoke about the 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 the, the love that you, Pac, Stretch had. And, and you're like, Stretch and Pac was like this. Where did it go left? Um, how, how did that relationship break down? After after quad, after the quad shooting. Okay. That, that's when it went, because well, they felt, it felt like, there's a few things that was said. The first thing is after Pot got locked up, Stretch was there at that hotel. Stretch had left, right? Because he's always with Pot. They was writing rhymes together, looking through beats, and listening to beats, everything. After the quad shooting, Pot felt the way because he said that Stretch imagined him didn't come see him when he was locked in because ridiculous. you had to have an ID and he ain't had no ID. All right, he's a convicted mm. felon. He couldn't come up there to see Pac anyway. Well, how we live now and what we do now, you know right, what I mean? Right, so right, right. Maybe he didn't know that, you know what I mean? But my thing was, you know, after all that happened, Stretch, you know, God bless the dead, Stretch is the one that told me that because he went to see, um, he went to see Tupac on Rackers Island. Wait, because he said, that Stretch imagined him didn't come see him when he was locked up. But they couldn't come see him because you had to have an ID. And he ain't had no ID. Well, how we live now and what we do now, you know right, what I mean? Right, so right, right. Maybe he didn't know that. You know what I mean? But my thing was, you know, after all that happened, Stretch, you know, God bless the dead, Stretch is the one that told me that. Because he went to see, um, he went to see Tupac on Rackers Island. After Stretch, all this. After all this. Yeah, because Stretch was still cool with us. Stretch, right. after all that. Cause Stretch knew what yeah, Right, he, and Big he, always spoke highly of Stretch. Yeah, he knew what it was. You know what I'm saying? So Stretch was like, when he, when he went to see Pac, he told Pac, was like, yo, that shit was funny. How when Season them came downstairs and they back Season them down. He said, Pac was like, bro, like Season them came down. He was like, yeah, they backed them down too. Because he didn't, remember, he didn't know. But then from there, it went to the, well, who's the who shot your records? You know what I mean? It was mm -hmm. like, it was always like, it was something else but or it was somebody the, it was in the 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 here just to, to try to keep push the, the, push the, push the envelope. I'm but it, it was the vibe article first. Yeah. That was the first thing he did. He did an interview while he was in, because he blew trial. And while he was in, on, on Rackers Island, he did the vibe, the vibe interview where he basically implicated y'all in his mm -hmm. situation now when i'm asking you now stretch being a more a more of a person that understood it from both angles he wasn't able to reach him and tell him like basically like nah they didn't they didn't do that i mean from what stretch was telling us he did do that but you know i mean you know. Pac felt the way because he said that Stretch imagined him didn't come see him when he was locked up. But they couldn't come see him because you had to have an ID. And he ain't had no ID. All right, he's a convicted mm. felon. He couldn't come up there to see Pac anyway. He had no ID. That's number one. And then number two, they were friends. The friendship and that bond was B.I., God rest his soul, Stretch, and Pac. They were all cool, bro. Like, if you've seen the documentaries on Tupac and Biggie, these dudes were, they were tight. So you can't ask somebody to pick a side when you know that what happened to you did not come from that person. You know Big had nothing to do with that. Big actually went back into the studio and got your gun from in the piano that they hit it and put it in his waistband and walked out with all of those cops out there with a gun in his waist, your gun in his waist. You knew that that did not come from B.I. So you asked the stretch to choose a sign. And he's like, you my man, and he's my man. You know where this came from. You know who you was messing with that we kept telling you not to mess with. So you know where it came from, bro. So why are you, why are you wilding? But once Pac got into wilding, there was no holding him back. There's no holding him back, even with a guy who's his brother, who he knows, meaning Stretch. Stretch was and there big. with him. And Biggie. And, and Biggie. But, but I'm saying, when, when Stretch 
when Pac got shot, wasn't Stretch standing next to him? Well, they, he got a, they that. laid him down. Yeah, they laid Stretch down too. He was with him. Mm. So he just felt like, look, it's either you gonna ride with me, or, or you, you gonna ride either with you, you. You gotta understand that that really, that stuff didn't really come out and really manifest itself crazy until that Vibe magazine interview, and then when when. Suge Knight put the battery in his back. That's when it really started going. So he wasn't dealing with none, nobody from the East Coast. Nobody. And it wasn't long. When did the, the quad uh, studio shoot happen? 94? Like 94. He was, he was in jail in 95. Then they got him out, right? And then uh, Stretch got killed not too long after that. Hmm. And did Tupac go to Stretch's funeral? No. And that's when him and I had a problem. Because we're both, we are both godfathers to his daughter. We're godfathers to his daughter. And no matter what happens, the one thing that I learned about is respect. There's a moral code, right? You can see, if, you, if you're a fan of movies, you watch The Godfather like me, the dudes that set Don Corleone up came to his funeral. Mm -hmm. Stretch mm -hmm. ain't have nothing to do with what happened to you in, in a quad studio. That was your man. You could have showed up at his funeral. You should have showed up and just paid your respects. Or even if he wasn't coming, you could have sent something to let everybody know that you felt a certain way about this man who was really kind of responsible for holding you down in New York for a long time because of the amount of respect that street dudes in New York had for Stretch. You know what I mean? They knew they knew where that dude came from. They knew his pedigree. They knew that cat would bust his guns when it was necessary. Hmm. And did Tupac go to Stretch's funeral? No. And that's when him and I had a problem. Because we're both, we are both godfathers to his daughter. Ron G is a uh, DJ out here in New York. Bro, yeah, he's like, Pac, I want you to come to my house and lay this rap down for me for my tapes. You know, you be representing whoop de whoop. I said, all right, I come, you know, for free. You know, I'll be down there. So I went to his house, me and Stretch. So you went uptown. I went uptown, me, Stretch, and a couple homeboys. I laid the song. Um, then I was getting a page from this guy, you know, telling me that he wanted me to rap on the record. And he'd been asking me for a while to rap on the record because it's going to be a song with me and big and all this he said we need you whoop de whoop because it's going to be a song with me and big and all this he said we need you whoop de whoop i said now this guy was i was going to charge because i had no connections with him you know and it was just i could see they was just using me you know out of the blue they wanted me to do the song so i said all right you give me seven g's and i'll do the song you know what i'm saying so he said all right i got the money come so i, I finished with ron g he paid me he was like you on your way i was like yeah i'm on my way Pac had already accused, started accusing Biggie. Right. Whoever did it, you know it wasn't him. Right. Right. And now, Biggie wasn't that guy anyway. Right. You know what I'm saying? That just wasn't him. So, we talking, me and Big. And Big is like, yo, man, I can't believe this dude would accuse me of doing that. Me and this nigga was super fucking cool, man. Like, he know I, that's not my style. And before, when Pac first started hanging out with Jack and everybody, Biggie or somebody in his camp had said something to him about it, and Pac went back and told Jack mm. and them. Yeah, and Biggie had got robbed. Right. Biggie got robbed? Of course. Damn. You understand what I'm saying? Yeah, I understand. So, so, so he, the same shit that happened in the movie, whether it was Big or whomever, they told Pac, Talking about my lifestyle, his album. Because when he was doing his album, he was broke, nigga. I was having money. I, the, the shit he talked about was my life. Thug life. That's what he talking about. All that junior mafia, them niggas was young motherfuckers that used to hang around that I used to give money to to get on a train to go home at night. Little season and all of them. And Kim and all of them. Yeah, so now they rapping against me. and You, you can imagine how I fucking feel. Mm -hmm. 
When, when I got arrested in New York, I got arrested for Biggie. Them guns in my room was Biggie's guns because them cowards left the room when they heard the police was downstairs and everybody left their guns in my room. So I got four guns in my room. Serial numbers scratched out and I did not snitch. I took that case. So you can imagine how I feel when I'm in jail for that case. And he out there living a mafia lifestyle, giving me no money, giving me no respect, giving me no tribute. Rolling with my road dog who was there when I got shot. I mean, come on, man. I'm not paranoid. Mm -hmm. I'm not paranoid. Nah, Y'all niggas know what time it is. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you what it is is that the East Coast drug dealers got them niggas under extortion. Mm -hmm. I came and fucked up everything. Because mm -hmm. I dissed them niggas in the Daily News. They put a hit out on me. When a nigga tried to rob me, which is all they wanted to do, I knew what they told me. That's what they was telling me. Pop. They were sending me messages through my closest road dog saying, Pop, why did you fight them? They was just coming to take your shit. But I wasn't letting nobody take my shit, and I was strapped that day. That's what was, I couldn't put in the bar. I had two, two double glocks on it. And when I pulled for my shit, that's when I got shot. That's and the reason I knew my homeboy set me up is because my homeboys knew like, I was. After everybody in the world been thinking I'm a rapist and a sodomizer. After this, the whole world gonna owe me an apology. Because I went through this and I ain't blow my brains out like Kurt Cobain. And I should, because this is some crazy, crazy, crazy madness. Straight up, I just kept thinking, they really did shoot me. And I didn't, none of that was there. I was like, I got shot five times, I'm not dead, they missed, I'm back. When Shakur Rizzi was shot five times, twice in the head and twice in the groin area, and his most serious wound, a gunshot through the hand, hitting an artery in his thigh. He's listed in serious but stable condition. Until it happened. I really did believe that no black person would ever shoot me. I believed that. I didn't have to fear my own community. You know, I was like, I represent them. I'm their ambassador to the world. They would never do me wrong. As far as that Vibe interview, just read everything over. And read my reply, read their reply, read what people say. Everybody that was there knows what happened. I mean, my recollection of the story was I was shooting a video the second half of Warning, which is on the B side of Big Papa, and I was shooting that around the block, and I heard my man was um, up at the studio doing a Junior Mafia session. So I got off at the reception area, and I saw Andre and Little Sean. So I saw him saying, what's up to me? I'm about to get on the elevator, and he comes out shot. The Tupac article had me pissed off, you know what I'm saying? Because first of all, he dissed my man. Say my man turned his back on him, and I know for a fact that didn't happen, you know what I'm saying? And, like, the rumors that's spreading is on some tip, like, we set him up, you know what I'm saying? And that's crazy. As soon as he comes out shot, me and my man, we go, we try to sit him down. He calls his mom. He asked my man if he could roll him a blunt. You know what I'm saying? We asked him if he's all right. He's just like, yeah, I'm all right. I don't know what's going on. And we just stayed trying to comfort him. Andre Harrell went and made sure he called, was calling the ambulance. And I mean, everybody that was there was very supportive of him. It was just the total opposite. As soon as he came out, everybody ran towards him. It was nothing they but love. Different, different accounts of what happened, and I'm the one with the bullet wounds. I also understand that if you was to get shot five times, your mind is just completely spinning, you know what I'm saying? You're real confused about your situation. So it'll cause you to say things that you really don't mean. I was there for the whole thing. No one else was there for the whole thing. I don't really know the purpose of why the story was said in another way of context. It's not important that other people know what happened to me. I just said it. Now that I said it, it's dead. You can believe me or not believe me. I did what I had to do. I mean, God knows the truth. It's no religion about getting shot. I'm not trying to get any comments. If nobody understands, but I'm a soldier. But it's affecting other people, though, is the problem. Other people need to just know that life's a bitch. They were just going to make millions and never going to be no problem. You want to be in a rap game? Hustle for it. Fight for that shit like I had to do. I done took bullets and went to jail for this rap shit. Done caught cases and got sued and paid millions for this rap shit. About a motherfucker being uncomfortable because I'm doing my thing? I don't give a fuck. About a week before I got shot, he knew the nigga that was shot me. He was like, Pop, don't hang around this nigga. You know, you know, I'll be walking with the nigga that shot me. I ended up shooting me. He 
was like, why the fuck with this nigga? Because I knew the nigga too, he was my mm. Cody fan. And uh, I was like, what you mean? He's like, I'll talk to you about it later. And we didn't talk. Ne the next time I saw him was at the studio where I got shot. So I knew he knew what happened. Mm -hmm. So I was like, Biggie, what happened? He kept sending me messages like a bitch, you know, like, I'm going to come see you. No, nigga, what happened? While I'm in jail, strangers is telling me, yo, you don't know? Biggie Homeboy shot you. Because they bragging. They telling they niggas in jail. Yo, we just got pop. Big Dave went to the hospital. Mind you, he did. The next day he went to the hospital. And I was with Big when we went home. So he was more nervous than anything. He was like, yo, that's, you know, that's messed up on what happened, yo. Who the fuck would do that? Elevating his stretcher, like, holding his finger up, looking at niggas, because we all turned around and looked like, he was like, pointing his fingers at nigga, like, fuck you. Fuck y'all niggas. I don't know what that was about. We was like, damn, see, see, you just, we just was, how was that just doing on the balcony? Why is he flipping? He was supposed to be thug life. All while he was coming up, I used to let him come on stage with me. He was screaming thug life. Hey, cause I he saw like, I hate Canadian. Brooklyn, I hate New York. I'm out with them niggas puppy cheating me. Woo, woo, woo. All of a sudden, he blew up, and he wasn't saying thug life. So I started getting mad, and I was seeing the niggas play, so he was hugging me, yo, pop. Yo, thank you, he's the only nigga that woo. KRS One. When PM Dog got on stage, he had talked shit about him. What the KRS One do? So why are people telling me I'm wrong for doing what I'm doing? They love KRS One. He is hip hop. Am I correct? That's true. Right. So I'm hip hop. I'm mad at Biggie. I'm rushing the nigga. What's the problem? When I got arrested for New York, I got arrested for Biggie. Them guns in my room was Biggie's guns because them cowards left the room when they heard the police was downstairs and everybody left their guns in my room. So I got four guns in my room. Serial number scratched out, and I did not since I took that case. So you can imagine how I feel when I'm in jail for that case. And he out there living a mafia lifestyle, giving me no money, giving me no respect, giving me no tribute. Rolling with my road dog who was there when I got shot. I mean, come on, man. I'm not paranoid. So I had people telling me, you softened up, ain't nothing soft about me, ain't nothing changed. My closest friends did me in. My closest friends, my homies, people who I done took care of their whole family. I done took care of everything for them, looked out for them, put them in the game, everything. Turn, fear is stronger than love. Remember that. Fear is stronger than love. All the love I gave didn't mean nothing when it came to fear. Tupac Shakur walked out of a New York jail last week, bailed out to the tune of $1.4 million by Suge Knight of Death Row Records, which has signed Shakur to a record deal. No question, signed with Death Row. You know, flaming it even more. I possess his soul, his and puppy. They know that I was the truest nigga involved with Biggie's success. I was the biggest help. I was the truest nigga. I don't write his rhyme, but he know how much he borrowed from me. He know how I used to stop my shows and let him touch the show. Let him blow up and do his whole show in the middle of my show. How I used to buy him shit and give him shit and never ask for it back. Y'all ready to do this shit? It's gotta be real G, Sam. I put out that they hit him up, the single just took Biggie apart. I mean, Biggie must have been destroyed by that, was he not? No, I mean, he was hurt not because of the words, because he was just like, he didn't really understand why this man had so much hatred for him, you know what I'm saying? Biggie, knowing myself, had nothing to do whatsoever of um, Tupac being robbed or shot yeah. in New York City at the and studio. As you point had out, no, Tupac su saw the people that shot him, so... Had, had, no, had no knowledge of him going to be robbed, and we, we, that's just a fact. Yeah. Anything else is a fantasy, and when Biggie heard it, he was hurt by it because he really regarded Tupac as a friend. Yeah. That they had good times. That's how they met. Mm -hmm. They their relationship before that situation is that they were friends. And he would never do nothing, nor myself or anybody associated with me would have never done nothing to hurt him. And in fact, he had helped us when Biggie was first getting out there. They were um, together. He would let Biggie open dates for him. Mm -hmm. And I mean, he was appreciative, and I was appreciative. And it was a shock to us. And it's something that we tried our best to do anything to alleviate any type of negativities as far as that situation. That's why we never made any records going back. We never said any negative statements. And the statements that we did say was everybody has to be accountable, even myself. 
I have to be accountable and have to be responsible to bring my son up the right way. And I have to be accountable and responsible for even the music that I put out. Mm -hmm. I have to do whatever I could do to put as much positivity out there. And it may, and I'm not talking about just going out and making a record, stop the violence. And, you know yeah. what I'm saying? I'm talking about making records that give you a good feeling, making sure that I understand what's coming out of one of my artist's mouths and how I could use my intelligence and my wisdom of things that I've seen to, to try to make sure that they you get your point across as an artist, but also at the same time, maybe you could say it another way and get your point across to where as it won't look like you think this is all right because this is not all right. Yeah. For, for, could you give us anything specific? I mean, is there any specific time somebody has tried to do a rap that was you changed a little bit? Or? Yeah, I mean, there's a lot of stuff. You know, Biggie has wrote that that I did change. Yeah. You know, in what way? I mean, he, he would be he would be saying something just to try to get his point across as far as as rap wise, just trying mm -hmm. to relate one thing to another, and it could have come across yeah. um, in a negative way. Like he said, um, one time he said, he was talking about how um, he had a song in his first album called Gimme the Loot. Mm -hmm. And he was talking about how he just, how he went in, he, he had to rob somebody in order to survive, in order to eat. And, and j just that, 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 at that point. But at the same time, it was just a, um, it was a story to him that was just entertainment, but there was a one line in there that said, um, I don't care if you're pregnant, give me the baby rings and the number one mom pendant. And I was like, you got to say that a different way. That's just, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, right. Like, you have to care if somebody's pregnant. And, you know, I tried my best to do that as much, but even I have to be accountable that maybe also I should have done it more. And I have to, I have to be accountable for that. I got an So let's play some of Biggie. I went like this, you know what I'm saying? I done fell stairs at the hard. We in the back chilling. Next thing you know, we hear a yo, Chupa got shot. He said that I fed him up. And that's crazy. I don't know what he was trying to hide. Or if he was scared. I don't know what was going on in his head. I want to apologize. Especially when I found out what really went down, and he shot himself. Get on the ground. Hey, 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 Shut the hey, up. Hey, I don't give a hey, 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 hey
So apparently that's the one shot that we know he received in the groin. Well, well we Freddie got had Freddy some kind of right. some kind of wounds right there. We're in a tight space. It seems like it could have been a ricochet. Pac shot himself. Uh, I can only imagine. For like the last month, two months, while he was right. going above the rim, I know the walk. I see the bandana. Right. But the first thing I do, you see somebody you fuck with, yo. I'm a kid. I'm 15 right. years old. Yo, what's up, bro? He looking up. Who that? Who that? The C's. C's. What's up, little nigga? What up, little nigga? Yo, come around the corner. I'm going to come downstairs and get you. Not knowing he was already coming there. So I run in the room. Uh, big. Pop downstairs. Hold on. So you thinking that he just pulling up to see y'all? I'm or? thinking he just random, just spurting through the city. And, right. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's what happened in Manhattan at that time. Right. Running around, you know. I didn't think he was coming there. I didn't know he was coming there already. You know what I mean? We ain't supposed to have been there. You know what I'm saying? Mm. So I'm like, you see somebody you fuck with. That's right. All right. I'm acknowledging them. Why should I not? Yes, indeed. Yo, I go in the room and I tell Big, yo, Big, Pac is downstairs. Big, like, I right, go get him. And that's when I go downstairs. And the crazy part is Nino came with me. Right. Nino heard the shots in the elevator before we even got downstairs. Contact like you go through his joint. Dino heard the shots in the elevator before we even got downstairs. You didn't hear him? Nah, I was just thinking about the weed, dog. <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't even. Right. Nino heard the shots in the elevator before we even got downstairs. You didn't hear him? Nah, I was just thinking about the weed, dog. <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't even, like, I'm just like, man, that nigga, I know he got that But Nino, like, you ain't hear that shit? I'm like, nah, I don't hear shit. Cora, recently arrested in Atlanta following the shooting of two off-duty policemen, was arrested and jailed in New York City early Friday morning and charged, along with three friends, with forcible sodomy and unlawful imprisonment of a young woman at the upscale Parker Meridian Hotel. Shakur, who was about the only good thing critics could find in the recent Janet Jackson film Poetic Justice, was in New York working on a new basketball movie called Above the Rim. According to police, the rapper met a woman on Thursday night and took her back to his hotel room. There, police charge, he allegedly called in three friends who tied the woman up and then assaulted her sexually. As we went to press on Friday afternoon, Shakur and two of his friends were still awaiting arraignment on the charges. The fourth alleged participant, who fled the scene, was still being sought. It's far, it's not even about my trial no more, it's just about loud rap music tattoo having thugs it's not even about me no more it's about you know some nightmare that these people have it she's talking about thug life and all yeah, that trying like, to um he's definitely guilty anybody with thug life tattooed on their stomach is guilty what type of reasoning is that you know what i'm saying we got different backgrounds we come from two different places just because i look different than her doesn't mean that i'm a sodomizer or a raper They've said it in the... I can't understand why it's this close. They're talking about there's no evidence that I ever sodomized it, even though you put that all over the paper. And every time they take a quote out of this courtroom, they take a quote from out of her mouth, which is, you know, the stuff to put me in jail. It's nothing that's been true. I just want print the facts so everybody can sort it out. My life is ruined because nobody has a chance to get the facts. And the fact is that there was no semen no found. No semen found, no forcible entry, no entry into the anal, no nothing, none of that. You know, and no fingerprint on the no gun. fingerprints on the guns, you know what I'm saying? The only time ever there was an act of sodomy, she admitted she did it to me. Okay. So, so again, you just spoke about the, 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 the love that you, Pac, Stretch had, and, and you're like, Stretch and Pac was like this. Where did it go left? Um, how, how did that relationship break down? After, after quad, after the quad shoot, Okay. That, that's when it went well, because they felt he felt like there's a few things that was said. The first thing is after Pot got locked up, Stretch was there at that hotel. Stretch had left. Right? Because he's always with Pac. They was writing rounds together, th looking through beats and listening to beats, everything. After the quad shooting, Pac felt the way because he said that Stretch imagined him didn't come see him when he was locked in because you had to have an ID and he ain't had no ID. All right, he's a convicted mm. felon. He couldn't come up there to see Pac anyway. Well, how we live now and what we do now, you know right, what I mean? Right, so right, right. Maybe he didn't know that. 
You know what I mean? But my thing was, you know, after all that happened, Stretch, you know, God bless the dead, Stretch is the one that told me that. Because he went to see, um, he went to see Tupac on Rackers Island. Wait, because he said that Stretch imagined him didn't come see him when he was locked up. But they couldn't come see him because you had to have ID. And he ain't had no ID. So how we live now and what we do now, you know Right, what I mean? right, so right. Maybe he didn't know that. You know what I mean? But my thing was, you know, after all that happened, Stretch, you know, God bless the dead, Stretch is the one that told me that. Because he went to see, um, he went to see Tupac on Rackers Island. After stretch. all this. After all this. Yeah, because Stretch was still cool with us. Stretch, right. after all that. stretch knew what it yeah, was. Right, he, and Big he, always spoke highly of Stretch. Yeah, he knew what it was. You know what I'm saying? So Stretch was like, when, when he went to see Pac, he told Pac, was like, yo, that shit was funny. How when Season them came downstairs and they back Season them down, he said Pac was like, like season them came down he was like yeah they backed them down too because he didn't remember he didn't know but then from there it went to the well who's the who shot your records was about. you know what i mean it was mm. like it was always like it was something else but it was somebody the, it was in the the vibe. Vibe. just to, to try to keep push the, the push the push the envelope I'm but it, it was the vibe article first yeah that was the first thing he did he did an interview while he was in because he blew trial and while he was in on, on Rackers Island, he did the vibe, the vibe interview where he basically implicated y'all in his mm -hmm. situation. Now, when I'm asking you now, Stretch being a more a more of a person that understood it from both angles, he wasn't able to reach him and tell him like basically like nah, they didn't they didn't do that. I mean, from what Stretch was telling us, he did do that. But you know, I mean, the Pac felt the way because he said that Stretch imagined him didn't come see him when he was locked up, but they couldn't come see him because you had to have ID and he ain't had no ID. All right, he's a convicted mm. felon. He couldn't come up there to see Pac anyway. He had no ID. That's number one. And then number two, they were friends. The friendship and that bond was B.I., God rest his soul. Stretch and Pac, they were all cool, bro. Like, if you've seen the documentaries on Tupac and Biggie, these dudes were, they were tight. So you can't ask somebody to pick a side when you know that what happened to you did not come from that person. You know Big had nothing to do with that. Big actually went back into the studio and got your gun from in the piano that they hit it and put it in his waistband and walked out with all of those cops out there with a gun in his waist, your gun in his waist. You knew that that did not come from B.I. So you asked the stretch to choose a sign and he's like, you my man and he's my man. You know where this came from. You know who you was messing with that we kept telling you not to mess with. So you know where it came from, bro. So why are you, why are you wilding? But once Pac got into wilding, there was no holding him back. There's no holding him back, even with a guy who's his brother, who he knows, meaning Stretch. Stretch was and there big. with him. And big. And, and big. But, but I'm saying, when, when Stretch, when Pac got shot, wasn't Stretch standing next to him? Well, stay, he got, they the laid him down. Yeah, they laid Stretch down, too. He was with him. Mm. So he just felt like, look, it's either you going to ride with me. Or, or you, you ride either you, you got to understand it. That really, that stuff didn't really come out and really manifest itself crazy until that Vibe magazine interview, and then when when Suge Knight put the battery in his back, that's when it really started going. So he wasn't dealing with none, nobody from the East Coast, nobody. And it wasn't long. When did the, the quad uh, studio shoot happen? 94? Like 94. He was, he was in jail in 95. Then they got him out, right? And then uh, Stretch got killed not too long after that. Hmm. And did Tupac go to Stretch's funeral? No. And that's when him and I had a problem. Because we're both, we are both godfathers to his daughter. We're Godfather to his daughter. And no matter what happens, the one thing that I learned about is respect. There's a moral code, right? You can see, if, you, if you're a fan of movies, you watch The Godfather like me, the dudes that set Don Corleone up came to his funeral. 
Mm -hmm. Stretch mm -hmm. ain't have nothing to do with what happened to you in, in a quad studio. That was your man. You could have showed up at his funeral. You should have showed up and just paid your respects. Or even if you wasn't coming, you could have sent something to let everybody know that you felt a certain way about this man who was really kind of responsible for holding you down in New York for a long time because of the amount of respect that street dudes in New York had for Stretch. You know what I mean? They knew they knew where that dude came from. They knew his pedigree. They knew that cat would bust his guns when it was necessary. They knew that. So you running around with Stretch was like, yo, you can't touch that kid. He with, he with the young guns. He with them Queens dudes. Them dudes is ill. That's stretching a man. You know? Mm -hmm. The same way he had that pass in New Jersey because of Tretch. When Pac went to East Orange and all that Newark, they knew not to touch him because Tretch is man. The same way when I was in Jersey and I'm running down there with the double eye crew, cats down there knew I was untouchable because I'm Tretch's man. I'm on a block. I'm chilling. I'm with Face and all of them. They knew dudes around there was like, nah, Ed, y'all don't mess with Ed, bro. Mm 